to start recording and we are live. And away we go. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 7 p.m. Newburyport Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for August 11th, 2020 via Zoom. My name is Mark Moore, Vice Chair. I'll be calling the meeting to order as our chair, uh, Rob Chimpetti, can't be here tonight. Luckily for all on this call, especially me, um, we have our city planning director, Andy Port, driving the presentation visuals and managing the participation of attendees, as well as our city planner, Caitlin Sullivan, on this call. Um, I'm going to borrow a line from our chair and also uh, introduce our, quote, intrepid note taker, Gretchen Joy, as we certainly appreciate her efforts. Well, I'm going to start with a roll call to ensure that we uh, have a proper quorum. And as I mentioned earlier, I am Mark Moore, vice chair, obviously in attendance. Rob Chimpetti is our chair and absent. Now I'll introduce each member of the board and ask them to respond with here. Uh, Secretary Stephen Delisle. Here. Member Rachel Webb. Here. Member Ken Swanton. I'm here. And Associate Member Walter Chagnon. Here. All right, finding five members present, we have a quorum and can proceed with the meeting. Uh, for those new to a zoning board meeting and or new to the Zoom format, as we deal with the RONA, uh, we find it helpful to describe the format of the meeting and how it will flow. Uh, before the public hearings, the board starts with its business meeting where typically minor modifications to prior approvals are contemplated and the minutes from prior meeting are approved. Tonight, we only have minutes to approve. After the business meeting is completed, we will close that section and move on to public hearings. For this portion, I will start by reading a description of the public notice to identify the application to be presented and discussed. I will then ask for the applicant to present their case for lack of a better word. And often it's the applicant's legal counsel or the applicant's architect or designer that will present the proposed changes to the property. Once the presentation is complete, we then move on to the reason why these gatherings, although virtual now, are called public hearings. We look for public comment. I will ask public attendees who wish to comment on the proposal to do so. It's a vital part to making these hearings a robust exchange of thoughts and ideas. I'll start by asking anyone in virtual attendance who wishes to comment in support of the application to raise their hand electronically using the mouse and cursor to utilize the raise hand icon on the attendee window of your computer. Andy Port will announce those that wish to speak in favor and please remember to unmute yourself before you speak. We ask that before starting to comment, you provide your name and address clearly for the record. Try to keep your comments succinct and to the point so that others who may wish to comment can efficiently participate. Once we find that there is no one left that wishes to speak in support of the application, I will then ask for those who oppose to electronically raise their hand and give their name and address and be heard. When those that oppose have been heard, uh, we then ask for anyone who maybe doesn't feel strongly one way or the other, but still wishes to comment to electronically raise their hand in the same manner and then be heard. Once all public comments have been heard, that portion of the hearing is closed and we move on to questions from the board. The board, sometimes inspired by public comments, uh, will then question the applicant or any one of their team to flesh out further detail uh, to aid in their decision-making process. Once the board <laughs> has exhausted their questioning, I will close that portion of the meeting and move on to deliberations. Deliberations in the public forum is a cornerstone of the public hearing format. Everything the board discusses about the application is done in public so that all in attendance get to hear the thought process of each member and the board as a whole as it moves towards the decision. During the process, it sometimes becomes evident that the board may feel it either needs more information or is leaning in opposition for one reason or another. <laughs> and we as a board will move uh, to continue the application until we can obtain the information needed or give the applicant the opportunity to ask for a continuance to address any concerns before closing deliberations and going to a formal vote, which has consequences for the applicant with respect to timing and cost. Once deliberations are complete, I then seek a motion from the board and when seconded, a vote will be called. Because we utilize Robert's rules of order, you will hear a motion on the application made in the affirmative or to approve, even if the board member making the motion plans to vote to deny. If the application passes, the happy applicant moves on and I then close that application and move on to the next, applying all the same rules. All right, did I miss anything, board or Andy? I think I got it all. I thought that was a great intro, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a script, so I couldn't mess that one up, I think. Okay, <laughs> so I've, I've called the roll, we have quorum. I've done my best to explain the process. Let's move forward. I now open the business meeting. 
Tonight, the business meeting consists of approval of the minutes from 728. And does anyone have any questions or corrections <laughs> to the minutes? All right, I'm gonna say hearing none, I just uh, need a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the ZBA meeting from July 28th. I'll second it. Okay. Now I'm gonna give that one to Mr. Swanton. I think he got ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so <laughs> motion to approve the minutes was made by Ms. Webb, seconded by Mr. Swanton. And I now poll the members. Uh, Mr. Champetti is absent. Mr. Delisle? Yes. Uh, Ms. Webb? Yes. Mr. Swanton? Yes. Mr. Chagnon? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. All in the affirmative. Uh, we've, we've, uh, the motion passes and the minutes are approved. So I will now close the business meeting and move on to public hearings. Our first application on the agenda is from um, Ryan McShara of Red Barn Architecture for the property located at 468th Street owned by Holly McDonald. Application number 2020-030 is for special permit for nonconformities as the applicant seeks to demolish and rebuild an existing nonconforming single family home at this location with an additional 639 square foot and parking below. The application has been continued several times, most recently from our 714 meeting where the board voiced concerns, one of which was re with respect to FAR. Uh, might we again hear from the applicant? Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan McShara of Red Barn Architecture here, 84 High Street in Ipswich, Massachusetts. Um, so we are before you, uh, as mentioned, uh, to seek a special permit uh, to tear down and rebuild a house at number 468th Street. Um, we presented site plan uh, at the last meeting, uh, showing the footprint of the building, um, showing that our setbacks were compliant with the uh, ordinance, uh, that our building height was compliant with the ordinance, um, and that our parking was also compliant with the ordinance. Um, as, as mentioned by uh, the associate chair, uh, we were asked to go back and do some further study into the FAR. Um, in this, in this uh, zone, we are allowed to increase the FAR past a non-compliance uh, by the process of a special permit uh, as opposed to a variance um, if it's deemed that it is not more uh, detrimental to the neighborhood. So using uh, what information was available to us uh, via the uh, assessor's office, um, we went in and highlighted a bunch of properties uh, around the neighborhood um, and did the calculations to uh, indicate their FAR uh, respective to their lots. Um, so I, I, I do need to uh, apologize to the board. Uh, I, I was in touch with Caitlin earlier today. Um, we did uh, incorrectly calculate our own FAR on the project. We have it as 0 0.30 on the um, application. Uh, I took the definition from the beginning of the zoning ordinance when I should have taken it from the Plum Island Overlay District uh, portion of the um, ordinance. So uh, the correct FAR for our lot is 0.32. So what, what that means uh, in relation to this uh, diagram here is that we have 16 uh, lots in the neighborhood that are, that are still more than our 0.32 FAR um, and six uh, uh, lots in the neighborhood that are equal to our 0.32. Um, so I, I think uh, what the numbers bear out is, is that our proposal is, is no more dense uh, than, the, than the rest of the neighborhood. And uh, as mentioned previously, we are going to be uh, correcting a nonconformity of a building that is about 2.3 feet from the lot line uh, and pulling that back to uh, just over 10 feet away from the lot line, 10.4 feet, 10 feet away from the lot line. Um, I know at the last meeting, we also discussed the Conservation Commission process. Um, and so uh, given the flood hazard uh, zone that our building is in, uh, we are allowed a 20% uh, increase in the footprint in the wetlands uh, overlay ordinance. Um, so we're, we're working with the Conservation Commission to uh, prove out the math that we are only increasing uh, the footprint by 19.5%. Um, so we will also be compliant with that uh, city ordinance. Um, they've asked for a couple uh, minor clarifications and, and additional drawings from us that we'll be providing and, and I expect uh, to receive approval from, from that board uh, at our next hearing with them. Um, so that's what we have new for you guys. Um, I would entertain uh, any questions or uh, any, any further discussion on FAR or, or any of our other uh,
dimensional uh, requirements that we're, that we're proposing for the building. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. McSherrod. Uh, now um, I will ask for any comments um, from the public and our, our attendees. I mean, if you could, if you could, for anyone that's in um, support of this application, if you could raise your hand and wait for Andy to recognize you and announce your name. Seeing none at this time, Chair. Okay, thank you. Seeing none, we'll move on to anyone that would be um, in opposition that would like to speak. Please electronically raise your hand. Uh, none of this time, Chair. None there. And I'm oh, gonna... uh, sorry, oh. sir. Uh, we have uh, Tara Kement. Uh, you should be able to unmute yourself if you'd like to speak. Yep. Hi there. I live next door on um, 1068. And I just had a question more so about, um, and we're just seeing that if you could go back to the drawing, because that's different from what we saw last time, I think. Um, but we just have a question. Excuse me, Tara, Tara, Ms. Grant, before you continue, could you give me the address, your, your yes. address as well? We're at 1068, so we're 1068, right. 1068, I'm sorry, you did say yep. that. Yep. Um, so I have a question more so about, um, we live at the, right next door, it's a really short, small, narrow street. And when they were doing some of the, um, the demo work initially, just like an F-150 truck was just constantly blocking our driveway in the street. And I'm concerned like with, bigger construction trucks, how are we supposed to access in and out? Because I would assume given how small and narrow the street is that there's going to be a lot of blockage. Um, that is an excellent question. And, um, and I only asked just because we had to, to, to leave our house, we often had to ask them to move so that we could get out. And I just, with more trucks, more people, COVID, I'm just a little concerned with how that would work. <laughs> No, understood. And I, I think that would uh, probably be something that we could address um, in the board when we question uh, shortly. We'll make sure to bring that one up. Can, oh, could we, could you show the drawing just one more time, just because I think this is a little different than what we had seen. Yeah, I think we're looking for the July 2nd uh, site plan. Yeah, uh, bear with me just one moment. And just while you guys are calling that up, my husband, Ron, is with me too. And he's far more familiar with drawings than, than I am. And he's, he's an engineer. So give him one second just to digest because I think. Yeah, so. this is different than what was just shown. The other one had the, uh, the stairway on the west side as well, which is no longer there. Yeah, apologies. This is Andy. It may have been uh, just for a moment that I pulled up the earlier drawing. Um, as he indicated, if I just zoom out of this for a second, this is the most recent plan date, uh, July 2nd, which would be the one recorded in the decision if the board were to issue approval. Okay. Uh, Blow that up a little bit and take okay. the. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I guess the other thing I want to touch base on is the last meeting. Uh, it was stated that the homeowner had talked to all the neighbors and got support. Uh, we've never had a conversation. We've never seen the plans outside of these meetings and uh, definitely did not get our support for it. So I'm not sure who they spoke to or whatever, but well, we, we weren't were, part of that. You were more concerned about the distance from- yes, Hi, my name is Holly McDonald. Hi, Holly. Hi. Um, in the previous meeting, it was stated that a few of the neighbors were contacted. And I contacted Mr. Kelly and the Templetons. So yeah. I didn't, I didn't mention I contacted all the neighbors. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, yeah, thank, I, thank you for that clarification. And just one of the, one of the neighbors contacted she was lovely and she, I saw the letter that, that, that she wrote, but she's been here once for about an hour or two in the past two or three years. So she doesn't live here. So I think it's just something to just be mindful of, but just more concerned than setbacks. I don't know if that's changed. I think I just- Yeah, no, it has, it has changed because okay. the other one with the stairs on the west side, it was a 10 foot setback, but the stairs were only six feet, I believe from the property line, but the stairs are no longer there. So that's moot. 
Yeah, and if, I, if, I, if I might speak to that really quick. Um, so uh, decks and stairs are allowed to encroach farther into the setback. Um, so they did meet the minimum requirements of the ordinance. Uh, but in this newest plan, you will see that we did uh, remove that stair from the west side of the uh, building. It's now uh, accessed underneath. Um, so that, that's now below, below the footprint that you see here, the, the, the main square, the 24 foot uh, by five by 30.5. Got it. Thanks. Are there any other comments, concerns that you had that you wanted to voice? I think that's it. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, I will now turn, uh, public comment is over, and I'll turn to questions from the board. And um, I guess I'll use the, the same format that our chair uses and just to, to keep it moving and uh, without having the pauses that happen during these virtual meetings, I'll just go down the line and, and ask each member uh, to ask questions. So I'll start with Mr. Delisle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, just a question for uh, Mr. McShara. On the FAR calculation, uh, you had indicated that you had made a mistake um, and it was actually 0.32. Does that mistake imp implicate the neighborhood FAR study? Does that make all the FAR for all those, all those buildings, the 30 buildings that you did the calculation for also wrong? No, nope. We are confident uh, in that information um, and, and, and took that information from, from public uh, record. Um, okay. so, so again, I, for, for our building, I calculated to the inside uh, as, as the, the main zoning ordinance indicates, uh, but the uh, Plum Island Overlay District requires us to count to the outside face of the building. Um, so so that's, that's what we have now reflected as, as the 0.32. Okay, and then so all the other ones, all the other fires for the 30 buildings in the neighborhood study were calculated properly. Correct. Okay, so we're just comparing apples to apples. Um, okay, secondly, in the neighborhood study, uh, parcels that are not shaded red or shaded uh, gray, but are just regular, those w are not part of the study, and that means what? Uh, the, the ones that are uh, unshaded, completely unshaded, without, without a hatch in them, are ones that we just yeah. didn't look at. Um, we, we were looking for uh, density um, and, and weren't going to uh, spend the time to analyze every single uh, parcel in the, in the neighborhood. Um, so, so the ones uh, with the red hatch are as dense or more dense. Um, and the ones with the gray hatch, uh, for example, number two, three, and four on the list that we're looking at right here, um, are, are equal or lesser density. When you, when you use the term neighborhood, what do you mean by that? Uh, I, th I think it's a pretty uh, vague word, but I mean, we could take it as far as the entire Plum Island Overlay District, um, but we, we just chose within, within several blocks of, of, our, of our property. Okay. Uh, I don't have any further questions at this time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Delisle. And, and we obviously, if someone, after we go down the list has a question, just, uh, just chime in. Um, I'll just go to Ms. Webb. Do you have any questions? I don't see her logged on. Oh, okay. Well, we'll get her logged back on. Maybe she had some connectivity issues earlier, so maybe they've, uh, they've perked up again. So I'll move on to Mr. Swanton. Uh, uh, Chair, Chair oh. sorry, this is Andy. He, yep. he may be uh, bumping in in just a minute. She might have disconnected and yep. coming back in now. There she is. Oh, okay. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a struggle here. This internet keeps going in and out on me. Hang in there. All right, so do you have any questions? I do not. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Swanton. Uh, yeah, uh, my question, I'm glad uh, this chart is in front of us all here. I mean, I counted about 150 properties on this chart, uh, and I actually looked up a few of them, and they were low density. Uh, and, and I guess... I, I, I'm wondering about a chart like this with 150 properties where several are selected. I don't, I mean, how did you pick which of these 150 properties to show us? 
Uh, I don't think there was a real scientific method to this. Um, I, I think what we're talking about here in, in FAR is, is a floor area to lot area ratio. Um, and, and so uh, I think what the board was suggesting last week was that they were nervous about the amount of density that we were proposing. Um, it, it could very well be that a lot of these parcels that are unshaded are compliant. Um, but we, what we wanted to, to show you was that uh, not only are we of equal density to, to several in the neighborhood, but there are many more that are more dense. Um, we, we could spend uh, an, an inordinate amount of time in, in our, in our, at our, to our client's expense to, to examine each one. Um, but, but we felt that this was a, a good uh, grouping to, to indicate to you guys that, that there is far more density, some as high as 0.5. Um, so that's half of the lot is covered by building. Um, we're, we're well below that. Um, and, and, and we think that our, our request for increasing uh, our FAR is, is fairly modest. I guess I could understand if you took all of the ones that were abutting this lot and maybe all the ones that were abutting those and try to get, you know, a sample of everybody in the immediate neighborhood. But to take such a, take 150 parcels and then I guess you're saying 16 of those have greater density than you're proposing. I, I just, I'm, I'm just trying to understand the logic, but I guess you tried to explain it. So I guess that's it. That's really only my only question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Swan. Uh, Mr. Chagna, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions, but I do appreciate the applicant uh, producing this map. It, it, uh, I think it does put us a little bit more at ease uh, with the uh, concerns over the FAR, but I have no other questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chagnan. I, um, I just have one question. I will circle back to the question. It'll just be general in nature. I, I don't know how much it impacts um, the, the board's decision, but I would I just want to hear the answer. How one logistically would uh, deconstruct and construct this house without obstructing the roadway unnecessarily? Yeah, and, and, and uh, we certainly appreciate uh, the neighbors showing up this evening and, and providing public comment. Um, we, we'll, we'll certainly be working very closely with them throughout the process um, and, and understand uh, the impact that'll have on our direct neighbors. Um, that said, uh, our, our contractor, uh, Mike O'Rourke of Nobleport Construction has uh, a lot of um, experience out on the island uh, doing exactly these kind of projects. Um, and, I, and I think as we uh, tear down the existing building, um, what that's going to afford us uh, is, is certainly more access uh, to our own site. Um, so, uh, Mr. Port, if you wouldn't mind calling up the site plan again for us, the July 2nd site plan. So you can see uh, the existing building on the west side is, is about two and a half feet from the property line. Um, so you can barely walk behind the house now without, without stepping on the neighbor's property. Um, so so as, as the first matter of business, the, the, the existing house will come down. Um, and, and, when, and before we do any of our foundation work, we'll have full access to the site, be able to park trucks, materials, everything to the back of the, of the lot. Um, additionally, when we go to start reconstructing, uh, you can see we'll have over 10 feet of space between the lot line and our proposed building, uh, which is more than enough for, for a car to pass by without uh, encroaching upon the neighbor's property. Um, and we can also uh, build the deck uh, last. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll maintain uh, a working uh, area around the building uh, as long as we can. We'll be mindful of the neighbor's uh, concerns and, and work to keep everything in the back of the house uh, and, and work to keep 68th Street free, which we also understand is, is a very tight situation. So uh, we're, we're, we're very sympathetic to, to, to their request. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, I don't have any further questions at the moment. Um, so I think we're gonna move on to deliberation. Can I, I jump in again? You may. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, I okay. just want to circle back to the to the far map, uh, Mr. Port. If you, you could put that back up. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Um, so I was just looking back through the notes of the last uh, hearing, and the request was to to provide the the far information for the neighborhood. And I guess I have to go uh, agree with Mr. Swanson in that we have sort of a selective group of, of parcels which have been uh, mapped here. And 
others which are are not analyzed on this map. And that makes it a little bit difficult to make a decision as to whether this is more detrimental or not to the neighborhood when we still really don't know what the neighborhood is with respect to uh, the FAR calculation. So I feel like I'm still not, um, I'm still not quite satisfied on this issue. <sighs> Um, it, uh, Mr. Chair, may I, may I respond? Yes, you may. Uh, so so I, I think um, what, what we have here is, is a requirement in the ordinance uh, that, that, that allows our FAR to go above noncompliance so long as it is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Now, I know, I know that's a pretty, pretty vague phrase and, and we use it all the time, um, but I mean, right across the street, number one on the list is sitting at 0.45. Uh, so so I, 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 I thought that was a fairly good example of something directly adjacent to our property that was, that was worth noting. Um, and and our, our request for 0.32 FAR, I, I just don't see as substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Anything, any other further questions or, or a comment? Okay, I think we're good there. Thank you, uh, Mr. McShara, and thank you, board. All right, now um, we're gonna move on to deliberations. And uh, as a board, we'll be focusing and shaping our discussions around the, the uh, Plum Island overlay district restrictions and requirements in concert with the regular requirements for granting special permits with respect to no new nonconformities being created and whether or not the changes are more detrimental, substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. The board may consider factors such as size, scale, massing, and volume as compared to other structures in the neighborhood. Again, I'll, I'll use the chair's format in deliberations by asking each member for a comment to keep the meeting flowing a little easier. So I'll start out with Mr. Delisle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, so, I know we, we sent you back last, uh, the, the last meeting that you were before us to, to do the FAR analysis, and you did that, um, and I appreciate that. Uh, the, the upshot I think of it, I, I think, is that what you're requesting is something, I, and maybe my math is wrong, and if so, Mr. McShara, please correct me, that we're looking at something nearly... 30% larger than what than the, the 0.25 requirement on the FAR. So I'm still having a little bit of trouble there as we as we deliberate this. And I, I your your point is well taken that there are buildings that are that exceed the FAR that you're requesting, and I understand that. I just don't know which of those buildings are are near you or not near you beyond what you've pointed out on the map. And that's what I'm having trouble with. Okay, thank you, Mr. Delisle. Uh, Ms. Webb, any, any comments in, uh, in deliberation for the board? Um, well, I, I can't help but wonder what the FAR is for every property touching the applicant's location as mentioned earlier um, it would be great to have this kind of information available on every city property <laughs> um, but that said it is a great graphic representation of density for the select parcels the applicant has chosen to show that there are other parcels exceeding the far um, I'm not sure it shows the immediate neighborhood around the applicant's proposed area, but it's interesting to see where those parcels are located. I guess I'm, I'm sort of struggling with whether to, um, to ask for that or not. I mean, I don't know that we ask this of every applicant, but um, those are some of my thoughts. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Swanton. 
Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I guess my concern, I mean, the planning department has asked us to think about Plum Island. They've kind of taken a position that density on Plum Island is not a good thing. Um, you know, the city council has set at this far of 0.25 and we're kind of the only loophole, if you will, at the, at the Zoning Board of Appeals to go over 0.25. And, you know, I look at, I, I appreciate doing this map, but you indicated that there were 16 parcels that were as high as 0.32, but that's out of 150. I mean, I, I don't know what all the other ones are, but the few that I looked at were lower. Um, and I don't, you know, just because some boards in the past have approved some of these things, you know, 16 of them out of 150 is a little over 10%. It's not it's not what the, where the pie out is. Uh, and the question we have to wrestle with is, is this proposal m substantially more detrimental to the pie out than what's there? And to go all the way to 0.32, um, when the critical density limit in the pie out is the FAR, uh, really kind of troubles me. And, and I kind of agree with my colleagues that just spoke around, you know, it's odd that we're not looking at you know, if we're going to look at the neighborhood, we're not looking well at the, uh, we're only looking at one of the abutting houses. Uh, and those seem to be one, two, three, four, five, seem to be quite a few of them there. Um, so anyway, I have a lot of concerns about this. I, I have a general concern about going over 0.25 in the PIOD uh, and creating more density. I'm not against development in Plum Island, it's just going over the limit that's been set by the city council concerns me. So I guess that's my comment. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chagnon? Yeah, uh, thank you, Vice Chair. Um, I guess I, uh, with this map and driving around the neighborhood, I have become comfortable with, um, you know, the density that's out there today. Uh, you know, I understand the concerns about uh, making the pie odd uh, more dense than it is today. But uh, I also feel for the applicant that, uh, you know, quite a bit of the properties out there, at least uh, f from the, you know, from the eye, appear to be in this 0.3 or above. Uh, and, and obviously the applicant has chosen to show us 16 that, uh, that exceed that. So uh, I've become comfortable with, um, uh, with, with the 0.32. And uh, I would I would support the applicant. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as far as my thoughts, comments, in deliberation, uh, you know, the far analysis has been a big sticking point uh, for me, especially given the location of this uh, property. And I know it's been the same for colleagues. And and like you, Mr. Jagna, I also feel for for someone that owns property and and wants to. You know, to update live and live well. Um, um, but I am struggling with the right decision on um, the amount, if any, of, uh, of a far increase that would make sense in this neighborhood. Um, uh, given some of the, you know, the abutting, you know, we have immediate abutter data in, in one place and that's been pointed out by colleagues. Um, but like you driving around, I, you know, you can't help but notice that there are other structures that, um, appear to have, uh, well, you can see them on this map, um, exceeded what we're trying to do in, in, on the island now. Um, two wrongs don't make a right. We can't keep, you know, we just can't keep getting more dense or no one's going to be able to breathe. And that's the reason for, you know, for zoning restrictions. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm still a little bit leery of it. I, I'm more inclined to go with it, but I, I'm just not sure as a board, um, it doesn't sound like, um, we're satisfied enough to, to make this work. Does anyone else have any comment? Okay, hearing no comment. Nope. I'll, I'll chime in um, sure. some more. This is Mr. Delisle once again. I, I like this project. Um, I think it looks nice. I think it would, it would be an improvement as to, you know, what currently exists, and I think that the applicant, it, 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 their heart is in the right place. I just think that we need to have a little bit more information, and I know I'm sounding like a broken record from last time, 
and I apologize for that, but I think we just need a little bit more information to make this decision. And the information um, that you'd be looking for is uh, far for the, the immediate butters. Yeah, I, I think if we can, you know, if we could circle the 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 property with the with the far uh, right. analysis, that would that would be very helpful. Yeah, that circle. Uh, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, if I might for a second. Um, I, I guess uh, I'm a little disappointed in the discussion that I'm hearing from the board right now. I feel like the goalposts are being moved on us. Um, we were asked to study the FAR in the, in the neighborhood. Uh, we didn't define the neighborhood, so we went out and, and, and selected some parcels uh, for, 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 uh, for analysis. Um, we've, we've presented that uh, to the board. Um, and, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous that uh, if we continue again, um, you guys are going to send us out into the field to find more information. Uh, it's only going to strengthen our argument, uh, as, as one of the members of the board has said, um, driving around, uh, it certainly feels like a lot of the other uh, buildings in the neighborhood are, are at the point three or above. Um, and, and I guess what's, what, what say you guys to, to the protection for my client that, that we're not going to get the goalposts moved again? Well, I, I certainly understand your concern in, in some respects. Um, I, I don't feel it was exactly moving the goalposts. We did ask for far information. And as you said earlier, um, defining the neighborhood is a little difficult. So that's kind of been fleshed out in a little more detail tonight. I thought I heard someone else that might have had a comment. Uh, Chair, this is Andy Port. Yeah. If I could, um, yeah. just sure. a suggestion or a possibility, I'm wondering if in addition to, uh, you know, further information, if the FAR is of concern to the board, which I, I certainly understand and, and would sympathize with um, as a land use planner, just because it's a, it's a district wide issue, um, not just, you know, one property at a time. Um, it, is there a possibility that the applicant could uh, reduce the scale of the project in order not to increase the FAR, thereby addressing the board's concern? Sorry, if, if, if I can just jump in. Suggestion. We, 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 we really don't have anything to give up on the inside. I think you guys have seen the plans. Um, we, we are designed and engineered right down to, to, the, to the minimal amount of size that we can. We, we've already reduced it once uh, as, as, as a result of, of coordination with the Conservation Commission in, in our first application. Well, if that's, if that's not an option and um, continuing to prov uh, in just in order to provide the immediate neighborhood far, we can certainly move forward with a vote if that's what you prefer to do. No, I, I don't think I'm asking for that, um, but um, I, 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 I don't think there's really an opportunity for us to reduce the massing or the density on the project. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand the frustration and I, I think I, I'll echo a few of the colleagues where it's, it's a really nice looking project um, with the, you know, vacuum but it's not in a vacuum. So we have some consideration to the PIA that, that obviously the board continues to have issues with and just needs a little more information. I don't think this will be as, uh, it's not as extensive an assignment if, if it's something you choose to do. Uh, and I would say that that would probably be the, the end of the goalposts as you put it. Uh, if you give me a moment to coordinate with my client, please. Certainly. As much as it pains us to do, uh, we will uh, acquiesce to the board's request for more information. Uh, we will go out and uh, find uh, more FAR in the immediate vicinity of the project and uh, report back to you guys. So All right. I guess we're asking for a continuance, please. Asking for a continuance. Okay. And can you, uh, do you want to do it to the next meeting? Absolutely. Okay. So you're asking for a continuance to the 825 meeting? Please. Uh, okay. Does anyone have a motion? I'll make the motion, Mr. Delisle. Uh, motion to continue the special permit for nonconformities for 468th Street to uh, 
the next meeting. Is that the September 8th meeting? No, that's the 25th uh, of, okay. of uh, August. August 25th, 2020, and this is file number 2020-30. I'll second the motions, Rachel Webb. Okay, we have a motion uh, made by Mr. Delisle, seconded by Ms. Webb. I'll now poll the members uh, for a vote. Obviously, Mr. Chimpetti is absent. Uh, Mr. Delisle? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Mr. Swanton? Yes. Mr. Chagnon? Yes. And Mark Moore? Yes. All in the uh, affirmative. The application is moved to the, the 825 meeting. And um, I thank you for your cooperation and for working hard to get the board uh, the information it needs to make a, a good decision. Thank you guys very much. And we'll be back to see you guys soon. Great. Okay, we move on to the uh, next application on the agenda. And that's from uh, John and Margaret Orne, uh, care of Lisa Mead of Mead, Tellerman and Costa for the property located at 18 Madison Street, application 2020-048. It's for um, a dimensional variance in order to construct an accessory garage that does not comply with required side yard setback. The application is continued for a meeting of 728 and I believe the applicant requests to withdraw the application. Uh, Attorney Mead, can you please confirm the request? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Moore. Uh, we request to withdraw the application without prejudice, please. Okay, um, request been made to withdraw the application without prejudice. Do I have a motion? Yes, I'll make the motion to uh, withdraw the application at 18 Madison Street. Rachel Webb. I'll second it, Ken Swanton. All right, we have a motion made by Ms. Webb, seconded by Mr. Swanton to grant the request to withdraw without prejudice application 2020-048. I want all call for the vote. Mr. Champetti absent. Mr. Delisle? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Mr. Swanton? Yes. Mr. Chagnon? Yes. And myself, Mr. Moore, yes. All in the affirmative. Request to withdraw is granted, and I thank you. Now the third order of business in the public hearing uh, is an applicant, Justin and Catherine Ponting for the property located at 11 Barker Street, application 2020-051. It's for a special permit for nonconformities as the applicant seeks to construct in addition to and a refiguration of a pre-existing nonconforming single family dwelling. Can we please hear from the applicant? Good evening. My name is Ken Savoy from Savoy Nolan Architects. Um, I'm here with Rebecca Barden, also from, from our office, along Hello. with along with the uh, applicants, uh, Justin and, and Catherine Pontine. Yes, this is Justin and Katie, and we are, we are present. Excellent. Please continue. So are there images that, that you can pull up? Uh, okay, great. Um, we might want to start with the site plan. Um, or even perhaps some photographs of the existing existing house, which you can see there. So this is the existing existing house uh, showing um, the work that was has been done by previous owners, um, along with the detached garage, which is part of the project we're proposing uh, to change. Um, and then I think there's another photograph or two. There's a straight on view and you can see the distance now between the garage and the, and the house. And here's a view of, of the rear. So the property is currently non-conforming in terms of frontage, lot area and right side setback. The, it complies in all other respects with the requirements, zoning requirements. The, the existing garage, however, does not comply in terms of area. It's larger than, than an accessory building uh, is permitted in this area. And you can see um, um, the um, square to the, the lot there, existing garage. Um, you can see in red, although it's a little faint, what the proposed changes are uh, to the site. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit here, right? We're proposing um, 
really three separate um, changes, one of which is uh, a second floor over the existing garage that will be built um, and supported independently of the garage, primarily because the, the existing garage does not have an adequate foundation. And rather than remove it, which would then require us to, if we were to reconstruct the garage, to elevate the, the garage above the floodplain, which is not practical, uh, we are going to keep the existing garage and, and support the second floor uh, independently within, uh, within the footprint of the existing garage. The second part of this project is a connector addition that would, will connect the garage to the, the existing uh, two and a half story dwelling. And that's shown, um, as you can see in red, in between it's, it, it's pulled back somewhat from the face of the, of the uh, front of the house and also tucked, pulled back also a bit from the, the rear wall of the house. That is also elevated so that the floor of that connector will be above the floodplain and will connect into the main floor level of the existing dwelling. Um, we will provide access to that via a stairway inside the garage so that you would be able to enter, enter that either from the garage um, or continue to use it from the front door, coming in from the porch and into, into the house. And of course, once we open up the wall of adjoining the, the addition, we will be able to flow directly into that, into that connector. The last part of this project is, a, is the expansion of the deck to the rear. Um, you can see proposed deck, we want to expand that, um, that deck um, provide a stairway down to grade. And although it doesn't show in this plan, we're, go we're going to add a small deck up at the second level so that in the connector you can access the existing roof deck that's on the main, main dwelling. Um, all of this additional floor area is within the FAR limits. The current house has an FAR, I think, of 0.14. 0.146 and the total FAR of the finished product will be 0.25. Um, we have reviewed uh, the project in detail with uh, the conservation agent and um, aware of the concerns that they have. So we took, took those in, in, into account as we were designing the project. Um, we go now maybe to some of the elevations or model views of the proposed elevations are nice with the red. Uh. Yeah, maybe we could. Uh, so this is a model view, of course, showing the second floor over the garage and the connect elevated connector uh, and how that will tie in into the house. Um, the, the main house uh, will remain largely as it is. Um, it's somewhat of a stacked uh, house. Um, Previous additions had have built up, creating decks at the at the um, at pretty much every level, including a roof deck on top of the house. But even the the penthouse, which provides access out to that roof deck, is within the height limit for this area. And of course, our new construction will not approach the height of that that penthouse. Okay. Here's another. Uh, oh, and here's another view of the of the project. And in this view, you can actually um, uh, see that if you compare this view with the current view, we're actually removing a deck on the right-hand side of the property, which now comes very, quite close to the property line. So we'll be removing that to improve the side yard setback. Um, that deck is not highly utilized, so. Um, the owners prefer just to remove it and uh, see it on the site plan too. Yeah, you, you can see that uh, removal of that deck on the site plan. So here's an aerial view showing how the kind of the decks work. Um, you can see how 
coming off of the second level of connector out to a small deck, you'll be able to continue up a stairwell up, up to that roof deck and as well have that uh, penthouse, the penthouse connection will remain as well. So there will be actually be two means off of that, two means of egress off that roof deck, which we feel also is a, an improvement in safety. Um, so back to the site plan, you can see to the far right, um, it's the existing wood deck to be removed that, that now comes within approximately um, a foot or so of the property line. Um, so th that summarizes the changes that we propose. Um, the, I want to point out th that the existing house has a basement, um, a finished basement that was finished by um, previous owners, um, that is included in the FAR because it's required in the Plum Island Overlay District to, to include basements. However, the, the, it's in the floodplain and it, the ceiling height in that lower level is under seven feet. So it's technically not a, um, if you were, you wouldn't be able to build that living space today with that, um, with that headroom, but it is existing space that's used, being used currently Part of this project will enable the owners to move that living space up into, you know, up and out of the floodplain, basically, and up into the um, connector as well as the space above the garage. Um, that space will remain because it does provide access into the house. You enter down there and come up a stair into, into the house, as well as you can enter the house walking upstairs to that uh, that porch that you can see here on the site plan. But we will be able to reallocate the living space from the current basement up in the, out of the floodplain um, in this project. Um, we feel that the, the um, change to the property is minimal, that we're improving the overall uh, appearance of the house and we're not creating a detriment to the neighborhood. We're staying within the 25% or 0.25 FAR and not increasing any um, setback requirements or set existing setbacks. So, um, I'll end my discussion there and open it to questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Uh, Savoy. I think at this, at this point, if there's no one else um, to speak on behalf of the applicant in presentation mode, um, we'll ask at this time for public comment. Uh, the same way for attendees, um, I'm gonna first ask for anyone um, that's involved in the meeting, attending the meeting that wants to speak in favor, please uh, raise your hand electronically and wait to be recognized. Uh, this is Andy Port, Director of Planning and Development. Uh, first person we have is identified only as Hey Now. Uh, so, I'll give you an opportunity to speak to the board. Is, uh, is someone identified as Hey Now? There we go. Can Here you hear me go. now? Yep. I'm, I'm new to this, so you have to be patient with me. It's all good. Uh, I'm sorry it came up like that, but it's, uh, my name is Jeff Hawks. I live on uh, 12 Harbor Street behind the uh, Justin and Katie, and uh, we have zero issues with them or anything they want to do to uh, improve the, the living space of behind us. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hawks. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor? Yes, one more chair, uh, John, uh, and I hope not to uh, mispronounce your last name, but Marchetier. John, are you able to unmute yourself and address the board? Sounded like we almost had something. John, you appear to be unmuted, but we're not hearing you. Uh, 
All right, maybe we'll circle back. We still have some people to to poll, and um, we'll see if we can get the uh, the microphone issue figured out. Is there anyone else in the queue? Uh, there's no one else who's raised their hand to speak this evening. Um, yeah, John, uh, we, like I said, you're on, you appear to be unmuted, but we're not getting any audio from you. I assume that because we asked for in favor, he's in favor. So um, I will take a little bit of time and go through just making sure people that are opposed have want, that want to raise their hand electronically will do so now. Sure. Not seeing any at this time. Seeing none, we will then go to anyone that wants to comment in general. Give a few more seconds. Mr. Vice Chair, this is Ken Savoy again. May I yes. uh, may I point out that we did provide a number of letters of support from the neighbors. Uh, Justin and Katie took the plans around to show their neighbors and discuss it. And those letters of support uh, were issued um, to, Caitlin. to Caitlin and I think passed on to the board. Yes, thank you for bringing that. I was gonna mention that once we got through this, but yeah, seven in total, uh, 10 and 12 Harbor, eight and 16 Barker, four Taylor and five Taylor. And, the, and we did receive them, but thank you for, uh, for mentioning. All in support. Um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Chair, we, uh, we do have another hand. I think we're, we're still waiting for John to see okay. if he can connect, but we do have another uh, raised hand from Hey Now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Mr. Hawks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Hawks. Hello. You're here now. Okay. Um, John just texted me. He couldn't get on uh, from next door, but he said to, so for me to let you guys know that he's in favor. Perfect. <laughs> okay. thanks, for, thanks for passing it along. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Where? What's that John's address? Uh, uh, Good he's question, next, right? He's next door to 12 Harbor Street. How's that? Okay. <laughs> we'll call that 10. There you go. All righty. Thanks very Thank much. You. You're all very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that closes public uh, comment and we can move. Oh, do we have anything else? No, that's that's correct. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks, Andy. So now we'll move to uh, questions from the board. And to do that and keep it moving, I, again, we'll use the uh, the chair's uh, method, even though in absentia, I guess, and we'll, and we'll just go around. Uh, questions um, from Mr. Delisle. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, just to, I guess the only question that I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Savoy is with respect to the, um, the living space above the garage is the, the method of uh, supporting that. Could you, could you clarify that again for me? I thought that you had said that uh, there's going to be, it, it won't be supported. The, the, the second story will not be supported by the first story basically. That's correct. We are going to we're going to put piles at the uh, in within the footprint of the garage at six locations. So at each corner and then on two sides midpoint, and we'll support a framework that you can see demonstrated here in this elevation uh, that will uh, support the, the second floor frame. Um, so it will be structurally supported independent of, of the garage. Now the garage has been there a number of years and it doesn't appear to be moving, but we know that it does not have a full frost depth found, uh, foundation to the point where it's adequate to support another level. So as I mentioned earlier, to avoid removing it and rebuilding it, we we're going to take this approach of just supporting the second floor off an independent series of piers and um, and floor system. Does that answer your question? That does, yeah, that, that answers my question. And with respect to, uh, in the, 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 the parts of the, of the proposed addition, the, uh, the windows and the, uh, the siding will match the existing structure? That's correct. Okay. And the roof angles, yeah. 
Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Dial. Ms. Webb, do you have questions? Um, I just have a question of curiosity. What is the use immediately to the right of the right bay of the garage? Is that being filled in as well on the ground level? I see there's, there's living space above, but the current elevation showing, I can't tell what that is. So that will be open through. You will be actually able to walk under the elevated connector uh, to the back of the house. So we're keeping that floor level above, above the floodplain, a total of, I think, two feet above the 100-year floodplain. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, Ms. Webb, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Swanton, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, I just have one question. Um, I noticed on the far, you are at 0.146 and your proposal gets you right on to 0.25, which I appreciate not asking to go over the um, bylaws 0.25. I guess my question is, is it a coincidence that it just happened to come out at 0.250 or was it planned to come out at 0.250? Of course it was planned. Uh, <laughs> um, we, um, took that into account as we were, you know, shaping and designing the addition uh, to make certain that we didn't add more floor area than, than we knew we could add to the project. Um, we did not want to request um, relief from the FAR. We felt we could stay within that limit. Um, we know there are enough challenges and hurdles with this project uh, in, in as, it as it stands and certainly we have to go before conservation commission as well but um we tried in every respect to uh, comply with the bylaw well, well thank you i appreciate that that's my only question thank you okay thank you mr swan mr chagnon do you have any questions i i actually had the same question mr swan came up with but i'll, <laughs> I'll ask the applicant uh, one more deep dive into that do you know the total uh, floor area square footage once the, uh, pr the proposal is completed? Yes. Yes, it's on the table that we provided in the Okay, app. my apologies. I thought it would be on the print, but I couldn't find it on the print. Uh, you know what? I, I just provided Caitlin with that. Um, and I should know it off the top of my head. I think it's so, sorry, we're trying to find it here as well. We provided, I think, that information to Caitlin in the- Yes, here we go. Sorry for the delay there. It just took me a minute to pull it up and I didn't want to get it wrong, but 1,947 square feet is the total and the existing currently is 1,137. Great, thank you, that, that answers it. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. No other questions, uh, Vice Chair? Thank you very much, nice assist there. Um, we'll move on. Those are um, you know, very thorough questions. Um, I, just, I just had one and I just wanted to see if we could circle back um, just to show the schematic of the deck that's being removed. And I don't know what panel that would be on in the presentation, but if there's a, um, you know, the 3D modeling of when that deck is gone. So I was just a little confused earlier on. Yeah, the, uh, well, so on the site plan. You could look out. at the site plan or, yeah. the, or the model view. Yeah, the model view, I think I'm going to So there, we don't show a model view with the deck, but that's showing it with, with that side deck removed. So that's just yeah. on the side. That's not, that goes all the way through the back to, to yeah, it would, it would connect with the back new one. on that okay. side of the, on that side of the house. Okay. okay. If you go to the, we have a photograph we could, well, we can't pull it up because we don't have the ability to do that, but there are, you can see a little bit there. There are a num number of um, evergreen trees along that side of the house. Mm -hmm. They kind of uh, buffer that side from the neighbors. Um, those will remain. We're just gonna take the, remove the deck. Okay, thank you, fair enough. Uh, I have no further questions. So at this point, we'll be moving into uh, deliberations. And again, we should focus our discussion 
um, around the uh, the PIAD restrictions and requirements, as well as um, anything that's involved with special permits, which is no new nonconformities created and not more detrimental or substantially more detrimental to uh, the neighborhood. So with that reminder, we'll move on and I'll start with uh, Mr. Delisle. Okay, uh, thank you. I was, I thought I was muted and I was struggling to unmute myself, but I was not <laughs> muted. Uh, good. So in looking at this, at this project um, and looking at the, the needs of the, of the PIOD, uh, it not being substantially more detrimental to the PIOD or substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, it appears to me that this project would meet those that rubric in that we're really just talking about a uh, the, the new space being the covered walkway between or the covered uh, uh, elevated pathway through the existing house to the existing garage. And we're not really increasing uh, the footprint by all that much. So I, I think that as we go forward and, and, and think about this, that's sort of where where my frame of mind is with respect to this project. And I think that otherwise, um, you know, where we see that this, this project meets the other requirements under 11 G four a, and I think that I can support this project. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Delisle. Um, Ms. Webb, do you have any comments and deliberation? Um Yes, I would like to commend the applicant in a very creative solution to uh, achieving more square footage without, uh, inc you know, without exceeding the FAR requirement of the PIOD and working within your existing building footprint for the most part, except for that little space uh, between the garage and the house, but that's elevated as you described above the um, ground level. So it's very minimal um, impact, I think, um, but you're getting much more square footage to your benefit. Uh, you know, with below the height um, re restriction and um, I, I can support this application. All right, thank you, Ms. Webb. Uh, Mr. Swanton. Uh, yes, I mean, I uh, think my colleagues said it well. I agree with them. Uh, I think this is a good project. I particularly like the fact that they did it without exceeding the FAR ratio, uh, and I can support this project. Okay, then, Mr. Chagnon. I, I agree with uh, the rest of the board. Um, I think it's a great project. I do appreciate the applicant staying within the FAR, and also uh, minimal minimal impact to uh, increasing the footprint on the property itself. Um, it's an unusual looking building for out there on the Pyod, um, uh, but the existing building uh, is, and I think the addition is in keeping with that. So uh, I can support this, uh, a great job. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chagnon. Um, I couldn't say it any better than my colleagues did. Um, I think as a board, we appreciate when applicants um, take seriously uh, the FAR, especially out there on PIOD. Um, but in many respects, this this ticks off all the things that you should do in adding, and, and I can't add anything else to it. It's it's well thought out, put together, and I can certainly support this. So for all the reasons that were um, mentioned by my colleagues. So if there's a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve um, the Application 2020-051, uh, 11 Barker Street, special permit for nonconformities. A second. I'll second that, that, Mr. Delisle. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to miss one beat you on that one. So I'm gonna have to give him the, the nod on that. So I'm gonna go uh, made by, motion made by Ms. Webb, seconded by Mr. Swanton. And uh, I will now call the vote. Uh, Mr. Champetti is still absent. Mr. Delisle. Yes. Uh, Ms. Webb? Yes. Mr. Swanton? Yes. Mr. Chagnon? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Uh, motion passes unanimously and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome.
Okay, we'll move on to our fourth item tonight. It's an application from Patrick Nessius, care of Lisa Mead of Mead, Tellerman and Costa for the property located at 23 Mosley Avenue, application 2020-052. It's for a special permit for nonconformities in order to add a second floor addition to a single family home. And might we hear from the applicants? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair uh, and members of the board. Lisa Mead, Mead, Tellerman Costa on behalf of Patrick Nessius as the chair advised. Um, Patrick and his wife are purchasing this home um, in order to make it their home um, and they wish to add a second floor in order to give themselves a little bit more space. So the application is for a special permit for nonconformities. Uh, it is only nonconforming for lot area. Uh, the district requires 10,000 square feet and the lot has 8,656. All other the dimensional requirements are met. Andy, if you could change the slide. Um, as I noted, uh, the applicant um, seeks to add a second floor onto the single family home. Uh, the existing house has a mean roof height of 14.6. The proposed addition will have a mean roof height of 23.5, uh, which obviously is well under the 35 feet maximum. Uh, the second floor addition will exceed the 500 square foot um, requirement, which is what triggers us being here because it has um, insufficient lot area. Uh, there will be no change to the footprint of the existing structure. So, and if you could show the site plan, uh, the, the property sits right at the um, edge of uh, Mosley Ave and Moulton um, on one side and Hardy on the other. Obviously, there's a house in between, but um, there, that's the property and it's a bit of an odd shape. Um, but the footprint won't change uh, with the proposed addition because it is only going up and not out. So Andy, if you could change the slide, please. Um, here are pictures of the existing condition. I'll note that the garage does not get a second floor over. We can see that when we go through um, the proposed plans, but this is the front coming in off of Mosley. And then this is the right side. And if you go to the next one. And this is the backyard. And again, none of these yards will change. And Andy, if you go to the final one, and then this is the other side yard. Um, and so if you could go to the proposed uh, design. So as you can see, um, it's a proposed uh, addition over the first floor, uh, very traditional um, for the area, given the age of the houses. Um, and the, again, the garage is staying a single family, but you get the increase in the floor area um, in the rest of the body of the house. And if you could go to the next slide, you can see the rear. So it goes straight up in the back and it carries that rear wall straight up. Um, both of the rear walls will go straight up. And if you can go to the next one. So the criteria for modification to a pre-existing non-conforming single family home is whether or not there will be any new additions to the non-conforming and whether the change will be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the currently um, pre-existing non-conforming structure. Here, um, if you could change Andy, uh, here the, there's no, uh, we don't do anything to create any new non-conformities, so we meet that requirement. Um, and we believe it's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structure. Uh, the only non-conforming is lot area, that won't be affected obviously. Uh, Mosley Ave contains a mixture of housing designs. As many of you know, it's some of the most eclectic houses we have in the, in the city. Um, there's ranch styles and predominantly capes and colonial style homes throughout the area. Uh, the proposed addition won't, uh, certainly won't make the largest home in the area. Um, and the overall size will be comparable to many of the nearby houses. Um, and if you could go to the next slide, I, got, I did a, a survey of the surrounding houses. And I'll tell you where these are as soon as we get through this, um, we can go to the next slide. But uh, 41 Molten is 1,200 square feet, 19 Mosley is 1,482. This is the size of the um, living area. 25 Mosley is 1,974, 36 Mosley is 2,004, 24 Mosley, uh, which is actually across the street, it's actually a two family, but it's 2,075. 20 Mosley is 2,232. Uh, 32 Hardy, uh, which is right across the street, is 2,292. Um, our proposed addition makes the house uh, 2,297. Currently, it's 1,116. Uh, 17 Mosley, uh, which is um, directly behind, is 2,422, um, or beside it, sorry. And 29 Hardy, 
uh, which is actually directly adjacent to it, is 3,338. And if you, you go to the next slide. So that Hardy house that I just mentioned is immediately beside it to the left in this photograph. Um, and so you can see that this lot um, is one of the larger lots or kind of on the area there, those three lots that um, are bounded by Hardy and Moulton and Mosley, um, given their pie shape-ish, they kind of all are the same. But um, you can see that the, uh, the houses, I gave you the houses that are immediately adjacent, immediately across the street, and then the ones at the corner of Hardy and Mosley and directly on Mosley and then opposite over on Moulton and Mosley and directly behind as well. Those were the two behind are a little bit of the smaller houses. But again, uh, we're not spreading out on the lot at all. And it's merely adding a second floor. And even at the second floor, you're looking at a height of 23.5, uh, which isn't even close to obviously the 35 and certainly is um, not as tall as the one immediately adjacent, the larger of the two. So um, the um, applicant requests that um, the board approve their special permit for nonconformities. Um, we believe that certainly the addition of a second floor um, for the Nasus family will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing nonconforming structure, um, which really it's a lot that is nonconforming in lot area. Thank you very much. Oh, I would ask, add also, we provided letters of support um, from a number of the neighbors uh, in the immediate surrounding neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Attorney Mead. At this point, uh, we will turn this to uh, public comment. Again, looking uh, in the, the virtual audience, uh, it, was there anyone out there that wanted to speak in favor of this project? If, if you want to, please uh, please click on the raise hand so uh, Mr. Port can acknowledge you. Seeing none, Chair, at this time. Okay, seeing none, we'll ask for anyone that might be opposed to do the same. Click on the raise hand to be acknowledged. And again, seeing none. Nothing there, so we'll give you one last time, last call. Uh, anyone in general that had a comment on this project, please feel free to raise your hand. And seeing none. All right. Uh, seeing that there is no public comment, we will move on to questions from the board. Again, we'll use the same format and uh, I'm not even going to mix it up. We'll do the same format. So, uh, Mr. Delisle, do you have any questions? I just had one, one question um, with respect to the, uh, the elevation. Uh, the, the bump out on the, on the front, is that actually a little bump out or is, is that how that works? Um, Mr. Delisle, I, I think it's, it looks like it's a little bit of a bay window. Um, I don't know, Andy, if you can go to the side elevation, we'll be able to see that. Yeah, you can see it's, a, a, you know, it looks like it comes out about maybe a foot, um, maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, I was just wondering if it implicated the, uh, the front setback, but it, it seems like that's not the case at no, all. No, it, yeah, it, it does not. Thank you a small bump out. Okay, thank you. That's everything I have. Okay, great. Uh, Ms. Webb, do you have any questions? I do not have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Swanton, do you have any questions? No, it's a good presentation. I don't have any questions. There we go. Mr. Chagnon, same question. Uh, no questions. Great presentation. Thank you. Uh, and I will concur with the, uh, well, almost the entire board and say that uh, I have no questions as well. Uh, so at this point, we move on to deliberations, and we'll just go around the horn in the same order we just went through questions. So, uh, Mr. Delisle, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think that this looks like a, a good project. Uh, I don't see that there is a uh, addition of a new nonconformity, uh, and I don't think this will be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood, um, and I can support this project. Thank you, Mr. Delisle, and thank you for um, couching it the right way without me uh, reminding. I, I neglected that little piece of it. Uh, Ms. Webb. Um, I would echo Mr. Delisle's comments exactly. Excellent. 
Uh, Mr. Swanton? Yeah, I mean, in looking around the neighborhood, I agree this is not uh, more detrimental to the neighborhood, so I can support this. Excellent. Mr. Chagnon? Uh, I can also support the project. I think it's a cute home today, and I think this uh, this addition is if uh, it is the opposite of detrimental. I think it enhances the neighborhood. Uh, great job. I can definitely support the project. Thank you very much, and uh, and I couldn't say it any better, although I tried to last time. I won't do it this time. Um, I agree with um, every comment that the board member has made. Uh, it's a good project. I agree that it's a very common change uh, to older homes in neighborhoods like this, so I can support it as well. Uh, do we have a motion? I'll make the motion, it's Mr. Delisle, uh, make a motion to approve the special permit for nonconformities for 23 Mosley Avenue, file number 2020-52. Uh, I'll second Shad. the motion. Oh, go ahead, Rachel, get in. That was very generally, I will, uh, I will agree, Ms. Webb. All right, so we have a motion uh, made by Mr. Lyle, seconded by Ms. Webb uh, for approval application 2020-052. Uh, I will now call the vote. Uh, Mr. Champetti is still absent. Mr. Delisle? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Mr. Swanton? Yes. Mr. Chagnon? Yes. And I am yes, so unanimously passes. The application 2020-052 is approved. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, fifth on our agenda is an application from Winwood Shaw LLC, care of Lisa Mead of Mead, Tylerman and Costa for property located at 68 Middle Street, application number 2020-053. The applicant seeks a special permit for nonconformities in order to remove a later added one-story addition on the rear and replace it with a conforming two-story addition resulting in a four-family use becoming a three-family use. Uh, now, it is my understanding that the applicant is requesting a continuance, so I'll ask Attorney Mead to, uh, to confirm. Uh, that is correct. Uh, Mr. Chair, we'd like a continuance to our August 25th meeting, please. Okay. For your August 25th meeting, I guess. August I should... 25, yep. Uh, let's see. Do we have to move both? It's getting a little tight. That would do it, but I don't think we're moving anymore, so... Okay, um, so we have a request to, con to continue this until our next meeting, which is August 25th. I'm from the applicant, um, I hear a motion. I'll make a motion to continue the special permit for nonconformities for 68 Middle Street uh, to the meeting for scheduled for the date of August 25th, 2020. This is file number 2020-53. I'll second the motion. Okay, so we have a motion to continue made by Mr. Delisle, seconded by Ms. Webb, uh, to move this application to the 825 meeting. Um, I will now take the vote. Mr. Champetti, still absent. Uh, Mr. Delisle? Yes. Ms. Webb? Yes. Mr. Swanton? Yes. Mr. Chagnon? Yes. And Mr. Moore, votes yes. Unanimous um, approval. Thank you yes. very much. Uh, through the chair, this is Andy Port. Yes. Um, I, I realize this is a continuation of a matter and there's no public comment required this evening. I just wanted to note for the record, we do have a Fred Neidhart from the audience who has raised his hand. Um, I'll defer to you on whether or not public comment or testimony will be taken. Um, the request to continue, I mean, I, I, I don't have a problem with it. I don't know if it's out of order to do so though, to be honest it, with you. It's not out of order per se. Uh, okay. my, my understanding in having had a conversation with Fred is that he may have some questions, uh, procedural questions, and I'm not sure whether it may, may, may be beneficial even for the board members to hear a response from Attorney Mead um, as to whether or not there are in fact any legal procedural issues. I think that's the, my understanding of Fred's concerns if he might be allowed to just say a word. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. So um, I don't necessarily have a problem hearing from Fred, but I do have a problem because the, the public hearing was just continued. And so um, if this is a comment on this application, the matter was continued. And so from a procedural point of view, if in fact he has procedural questions, it should have happened before, which is not the practice of the board. So um, I, I'm happy to do what the board wants to do, but it, is, um, it would seem out of order to me. 
Yeah, that, that was uh, kind of my concern when we just moved right to continuance that we're kind of backing it up a little bit. Um, so I think right. I would. So we'll continue the matter. And, I think we're uh, just going to continue the matter because, um, yeah, it, it just sure. kind of goes against what we did. Sure. So just for clarity of the record, so Fred, what that means is effectively this hearing is continued. So any additional testimony will be taken at the next meeting that the board has on this application. So any concerns you have can be raised at that time. And if you have further questions or comments that the staff can answer, you can reach out to the office uh, again. And thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so our final application of the night is submitted by CWC Design uh, for the property owned by uh, Henry Realty Trust at 400 and 402 Merrimack Street, application number 2020-054. The applicant seeks to construct an enclosed front entry to a multifamily apartment building. Uh, might we hear from the applicant? Probably. Hello? There we go. Okay, hi. Uh, my name is Chris Crump with CWC Design, uh, 19L In Street, Newburyport. I'm representing a, a client, um, Matthew and Steve Gagnon, who own the building, um, the two buildings, I should say, at 400 and 402 Merrimack Street. Um, they purchased the buildings in <clears throat> 2018, um, and since then have been drastically improving the buildings uh, to make them uh, look better, both inside and out. Um, currently, uh, the two buildings are in an R1 zone, uh, which does not allow multifamily housing. So they're pre-existing non-conforming, um, but they do meet all the other regulations uh, required in the dimensional, uh, dimensional, dimensional controls for the uh, property. Um, and what we're basically doing is, uh, what we'd like to do is the front entry porches that we see on the front of the buildings, there's one on each building. The, the two buildings are identical. Um, you're probably very familiar with them as uh, it's very, uh, very up, you know, it's very visible from the street as you're going down Merrimack, right? Um, right, it's close to the Mercer building. Um, but in any case, uh, we're looking to take the uh, deteriorating uh, front entry porches off. Um, they're just covered entry porches and basically put the new enclosed entry porches in their place that, um, as you can see here in the elevation, um, they're very relative in scale to the existing porches that are slightly bigger than the existing porches that are there. Uh, but the, what they're going to do is provide uh, an interior space for mailboxes and large, large delivery packages. Uh, so they're not left out uh, outside for others to, uh, to be mistakenly taken or something to that effect. So this is a picture of the existing building with the front entry porch as it is now. Um, and, and then with the Next photo, you can see it's going to be an enclosed entry porch that sticks out uh, five feet. It's a five foot by nine foot. Uh, uh, it sticks out that much. Uh, the building um, kind of gives it a little bit more depth to the building as well, so they don't look so monolithic on the outside. Um, we also, and there's the floor plan, so you can see that we're just putting some shelving and some mailboxes in there, uh, some windows, some natural light to come in, and then a little front uh, porch on top of that and in front of it to give it the uh, more of a residential feel to the building. Um, and then if you can proceed to the next uh, slide, uh, we have uh, we should have some pictures up afterwards. Um, so this is the house to the right of the property. There's a house that was just done recently. Uh, you can see that it's about three feet uh, off the sidewalk. Um, and, and to the left of the property, there are some other houses right up the street that are uh, fairly closer to the street so it's pretty much it, it's within it's still without outside the uh, setbacks and the proximity of the other houses abutting it so it wouldn't be more detrimental to the neighborhood um, and the new entry porches are going to resemble what we did on the back side is that the the porches on the back side of the building are very similar they have a front en front entry and a rear entry on each building uh, and on the back side uh, they had deteriorating porches there as well we replaced the existing decking on the back side so um, to freshen up the whole building and give it a nice appearance. Um, and so we're basically going to mimic the similar type of scenario that we have on the back onto the front, but make it an enclosed, uh, an enclosed porch uh, so that we can, an enclosed entryway so that we can have the, 
area for the packages and, and so forth and a nice entry for the residents to come into. Um, and so my client has been slowly restoring these buildings uh, to bring them up and, and make them look a lot more nice, uh, a lot nicer. Uh, if you've driven by the property recently, you'll notice that they put up a really nice, beautiful white picket fence that goes down the neighborhood. They've redone all this, uh, the grass on the front of the neighbor, uh, in front of the buildings, uh, flower beds, um, and the buildings look uh, 10 times better than what they did uh, probably a few years ago. So um, slowly improving it, and this is uh, one step further in trying to improve that the piece of property here and make it more presentable and uh, nice to the neighborhood. Uh, and I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, again, all the dimensional controls um, still stay uh, below the requirements, the required dimensional controls uh, for the whole property, including the front setback and so forth. So um, we should, uh, other than that, it's just because of the use of the property, uh, being a multifamily, uh, we have to uh, go through the uh, ZBA to get approval uh, because it's multifamily in a residential zone. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Crump. Right now, we, we turn to uh, public comment. I don't know if anyone's uh, out there that uh, wishes to comment in favor of this application. Please electronically raise your hand. Chair, I'm seeing none at this time. Thank you, Andy. Um, at this point, anyone in opposition? Please raise your hand. Again, nothing at this time. All right, one last shot for someone to unmute. Um, anyone that just wishes to make a comment in general? And again, no interested parties. Okay. We'll then move to questions from the board and we'll start with Mr. Delisle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, I don't really have any questions uh, here. I think I understand that, you know, you, you have to uh, come before the board for the permit uh, to ex expand the multifamily use. Um, so I, I don't think that's a problem. I think that there is no real intensification or extension of an existing nonconformity as the uh, the entryway area existed before. And I, and I guess my question would be: um, Is the, the the dimension, the dimensional spe specifications of the entryway area, is that going to remain the same? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. I mean, the the front entry porch right now um, is probably the. Uh, about the size, a little bit smaller than what the enclosed area will be. And then there'll be a front porch uh, in front of that. So um, an elevation, yeah, oh, so there you go with that. The, you can see the existing is the light. Um, oh, I see, okay. The, the heavier line is the new addition. Yeah. Um, the lighter line is the existing front entry porch. So you can see it's slightly bigger than the existing uh, front entry porch. And then there'll be a, a, a stairs and a covered porch in, in front of that. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, so with that, I think that uh, we the second prong here is that it would not be uh, substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood uh, than the existing non-conforming structure or use, and I don't think that that is the case here. So I think that this. Uh, 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 I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Delisle. Ms. Webb, do you have any questions? I do not have any questions. This is a very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Swanton? Uh, no, question, uh, no questions for me. Mr. Chagnon? I had a quick question. Um, the proposed landing and stairs, um, a portion of that is covered by a roof. Is that correct? It is. Does that get used to calculate the setback? I, I know in some towns, a covered stairway is considered part of the base building. Is that uh, not the case here? 
Uh, this is Andy. We, it's not enclosed on three sides. Um, we don't consider it to be, if that's your question, the front porch portion. Is that what yeah. you're? Yeah. Um, okay. We wouldn't consider that to be, yeah. yeah. So, the, so the roof itself doesn't trigger it. It has to be enclosed on three sides. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Andy. I have no other questions, uh, Vice Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chagman. And thank you, Andy, for clarifying that. That was, uh, that was very helpful. Um, and with that, I have no further questions as well. So with no questions from the board remaining, we move into deliberations and we'll start back at the top of the order. So uh, Mr. Delisle, I know you, you kind of got into the discussions a little bit on special permit process um, at the end of your questioning. So if you just wanted to wrap, wrap that up, that'd be fine too. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I did, I did attempt to, uh, to streamline the meeting and, and merge my, my questioning and my uh, deliberation. Uh, did not do that intentionally, it just sort of happened. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, for the reasons I, I stated earlier, I think that this looks like a, a fine project and uh, this is something that I can support. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Webb? Yes, I too find that um, you know, this application um, is demonstrating there's gonna be no intensification or extension of an existing nonconformity. And um, yeah, I can definitely support this project. It's, uh, the owners have done a tremendous job improving the property. I've kind of watched it happen over the last several months and um, it's transformative. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Webb. Mr. Swanton. I agree with my colleagues. Well said. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Chagnon. I agree with everyone else. Uh, great project and I can support it. Thank you. And I would have to echo um, all of my colleagues and I can support it for all the reasons that have been uh, discussed. Um, so with deliberations coming to an end, um, a motion, if there is one out there. I'll make a motion to approve the special permit for nonconformities application uh, number 2020-054 for 400-402 Merrimack Street. I'll second that, Mr. Delisle. All right, we have a motion uh, to approve uh, made by Ms. Webb, seconded by Mr. Delisle, and I will now call the vote. Uh, Mr. Champetti continues to be absent. Mr. Delisle. Yes. Ms. Webb. Yes. Mr. Swanton. Yes. Mr. Chagnon. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. All in the affirmative. Uh, motion passes. The application is approved. Um, that's 2020-054. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. And with that, that concludes our agenda for tonight. Thank you all for your help. Uh, might there be a motion to adjourn? Yes, I'll make that motion to adjourn, Rachel Webb. Back in, Ken Swanton. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, motion to adjourn made by Ms. Webb, seconded by Ken Swanton. I'm going to go to a vote by voice because I think it'll go well. Uh, please, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, and anyone opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned. Thank, Thank you all very much. Thanks for the help, Andy. I really appreciate it. Sure. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Thank you, guys. Thanks, nice job. Thanks. 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 Bye -bye. Nice job. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.